Hello and welcome back to more random Order of the Crimson Arm 100% Croats Motron Count playthrough. This year we'll be tackling chapter 22. It's a seas map, although it's more akin to multi seas. There's one throne in the center, but we need to press two switches to reveal it. I got Algamus one final level in this map. This caps out his strength and gives him, to, uh, I believe that's capped skill and cap speed. He needs cap strength for next chapter, and having as much skill muck as possible makes it more reliable. This chapter is fairly simple, but I go out of my way to complete some side objectives. That, and I wasn't sure how many I'd need. There are two chests on this, uh, in this map. One contains an angelic robe, and one contains... A brave sword. We end up getting both, although we only need the angelic robe. However, I both want to flex and show that you could get both the brave sword and the angelic robe, although you require a 10-move flyer for that. And I wanted to... Well, I wasn't sure if I needed the brave sword. I'll say that. Most of what units are doing on the sides here is just capping out their weapon ranks and stats. Because the only units that really matter are already in motion. In order to get the chest and take the left point, because we're sending our eight, our 10 move flyer to the right side, we need to send three 8 move units to the left side. In order to get everything there. We're farming a little bit more weapon experience on Negu. I believe she already has hit a rank lances, though, so it doesn't really matter. She will never end up hitting S rank lances. Lonnie used a killer lance, although she could have used a silver lance. And there's no real reason for it. Well, there is. It makes this enemy phase more reliable. We'd prefer Waylon to not get hit, but it doesn't really matter. Having another unit on the right side would make it so that Lonnie only has to take the switch. But it would also make something slightly more complicated. What I admittedly should have done was drop Tanya on the right side, because then she'd be able to farm weapon experience. That's S rank Bose on Celia. As it turns out, she never needed to hit it. She, in fact, never needed cap stats at all. But hindsight is twenty twenty. We do end up sending August over to the right. This is just because it's easy for her to farm some weapon experience that way. We're using stabs with Clara here because you want her to hit B rank staves for endgame. We never end up using this brave sword. Although I wanted to show that you could get it, just in case you needed it. And we're all seeing this game. Which I don't think would be a terrible idea. There are definitely turns that could be shaved from this run. just comes down to will you be the one to find it. Camille does use stats a few more times than I expected in this playthrough, which is pretty funny. I forget who has the Delphi shield. I think it's Lonnie. I should have given it to Wayland. That is a red glances. That is as high as her lance rank will ever get, and it is high as it will need to be. Getting that crit on the general made my life so much easier. It would be entirely possible to clear this map without getting the crit on the general. It was only 
but it would be more annoying. A killer lance double crit would have worked, though. I think. Most runes that are being trained are just being trained for filler combat duties in the final chapter. Clara could replicate what Elaine is doing, but Elaine has slightly higher stats. Not to mention her tome rank is not quite at A rank yet, and it never comes up, but I was thinking I might be able to get her to S rank. However, Elaine has Physic and Wayland does not. This is the one time in the playthrough having access to C-Rank Lances, in theory, helped Sven. I don't know how the AI would have worked out. Having the Lance equipped means the Berserker will go for, should in theory go for Sven. But I'm not quite sure. This was me trying to build up Tanya's tome, uh, staff rank. I should have honestly picked her up and dropped her off to the right. I might have been able to hit S rank white that way. August is the Delphi shield, okay. Getting the general out of my way, though, would have been necessary one way or the other. Or getting the hero out of my way. Because I need Lani to be on this tile this turn. If I just want to have her seizing it. I realized while I was recording this that I forgot to give Boleslav a good weapon to kill the boss. Because all he has is an iron. An iron bow. And a steel bow, but the steel bow is slightly too weak. The best option would have been to take a silver bow. Nagy's really come a long way. We hit during stabs, although we never end up using it. We're spamming Clara, uh, Clara's staffs because we want to build her up to Physic rank, which she hits now. With her personal weapon equipped, she gets an extra 3 magic, so in theory, if I saved her the energy rings, she'd be able to have a higher physic range than Elaine. In hindsight, I could have just given Sven a Lance Reaver, I mean a Sword Reaver, and this enemy phase would have worked out exactly the same. That bishop that Lani is next to poses no threat to her at all. For Call Krakwe, he deals a single point of damage to her, if that, has no crit and gets one rounded by even an iron sword. That is S rank axes for August. I could have had August attack there, but there's literally no point in doing so unless I wanted her to get an extra point of HP or luck. This chest contains the Angelic Robe. This should have gone to Lani. It would have made the next map slightly more reliable. I didn't think of doing that in, in time, though. Bimblevetra is technically considered a wind tome, if you didn't know. Sven, even at strength cap with silver axe, couldn't one run that couldn't one shot that sage. The best weapon to use would have been the brave axe if I even remotely cared. The reason I got out both the brave bow and the killer bow is because I wasn't sure which one I would have to use to kill the boss.
I just decided to go with the Brave Bow in the end. Fenrir, we haven't obtained one yet, is a Brave Tome in this hat. It doesn't matter, though. Boleslav gets his final necessary level up. Now with kept speed, he could be undeployed for the rest of the game, and be totally fine. Andrew could replicate his role, and I honestly wish I trained Andrew instead, because I do not like Boleslav. But Boleslav helped out more in maps before Andrew joined. I dump all of Algamus's things in the convoy. He won't need them anymore. Because at the end of this map, you get Rongimont. A mage that is one a lance that is one to two range, grants plus five strength, has infinite uses. And is pretty solid knight. Carwenon is a sword for Wayland that it grants plus three speed, and the tome that Camille gets gets used exactly one time, because I feel bad that I wouldn't use it otherwise, and is just a pretty solid tome with decent knight. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for chapter twenty-three.